Hey, fourth grade. Um, thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to go over day six and seven of the content in learning packet four. Um, I've had quite a few kids in my class ask a little bit about the content now that we're learning new stuff. So we're just going to take a look at what the work is for um, both yesterday and today for day six and seven and see what we can do and um, how we can answer some of those questions on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And we're gonna take a look at the digital version of the packet. A lot of your teachers have uploaded these onto Google Classroom. If you're in my class, you'll recognize the backgrounds and stuff. So here we have, of course, our content work. At the very beginning, it explains the virtual learning packet number four. Don't forget that you turn in two submissions for each subject each week to your teacher for feedback. So this week, you're going to be selecting your two best pieces of work from reading, your two best pieces of work from writing, your two best pieces of work from math, and your two best pieces of work from content, which is Virginia Studies. That's a total of eight assignments due at the end of the week, just like every week previous. So don't forget to do that. Now, let's take a close look at day six for content. So. This is the creation of West Virginia, which is really interesting because, of course, West Virginia used to be part of Virginia, and it was right around the Civil War when we split off. So what we're doing, oh, excuse me, for day six today is we're going to read the creation of West Virginia. We're going to read that together to discover how the very commonwealth we live in was divided on the issue of slavery, just like the whole country was at the time. Look closely at the maps of Virginia before and after the Eastern Territory seceded from the Union and joined the Confederate States of America. Now we're going to use the maps and information to respond to the question prompt. There is an optional website for you to look at if you want more information about the creation of West Virginia, and that is completely optional. That's just if you're really interested in the topic and want to learn more. So let's read this together. The creation of West Virginia. Let's review. You learned that after Abraham Lincoln was elected president, the southern states seceded and became the Confederate States of America. But what about Virginia? Was Virginia a part of the Union or the Confederacy? Where did our state stand in this major disagreement about slavery? Let's find out. Now take a look. Virginia was once a much larger area of land, but Virginia was split on the issue of slavery just like the country was, and the geography of the state changed. Just like the South broke away from the North over the issue of slavery, the Western territories of Virginia seceded from the East. The East wanted to keep their slaves, but the West wanted to remain loyal to the Union and President Lincoln. We're gonna examine the diagram on the next slide, and then we're gonna go through the questions you're supposed to answer for day six. So let's take a look at this map of West, uh, the creation of West Virginia. So this is what Virginia looked like May 15th, 1776. So that's right after the Revolutionary War through October 24th, 1861. So you'll notice that right here is usually what Virginia looks like, right? Right through the, this, there'd be a line here. But we can see that 1776 through 1861, for almost a hundred years, it had this part down to the western part. So there was a bigger western part to it. And when we come over here and look at the next slide, West Virginia and East Virginia, which we just call Virginia. That's where we live now. This is what it looks like from June 20th, 1863 through April 9th, 1865. And you can see this is when it broke off. So over here, Virginia is a slave state. Oops. And West Virginia is a free state. So the question prompt we need to answer using these maps is, how the geography of Virginia changed after being divided over the issue of slavery. You need to include the words Eastern Territory and Western Territory in your writing. The most important thing to think about, I think, as we start preparing the writing is we can see that there's a very clear divide over the direction. Let's think about when we studied the regions, what products were most available what kind of industries they had in the eastern side. Over here, it's very agricultural, right? The eastern side, 
mainly there was a lot of tobacco that was grown. And when we come over here, when we go to the Appalachian Plateau and the Blue Ridge Mountains, this is a lot of coal and other industries that are big over here. So growing tobacco depended on what kind of work. We talked about it when the Africans were brought over into Jamestown. The reason tobacco became such an important crop, the reason tobacco flourished was because they started farming a lot more. But they started farming a lot more because they had slaves. So it wasn't because people were wanting to work these farms when they came over. They were slaves. And so these great big plantations were created. And they were run by slave labor, who did the farming, who did the picking, who made sure that the farms were running. And West Virginia, as a coal state, they were digging coal, they were mining coal, sorry, not digging it. Um, the, the industry they were doing was not dependent on slave labor. And I think their thoughts really were that farming didn't have to be dependent on slave labor either, just because that's the way it had been done for so long. There's no reason why. They decided to stand with President Lincoln. Whereas Virginia decided they did not want to stand with President Lincoln. They were dependent on slave labor for their agriculture and their economy. So Virginia became part of the Confederate States of America. As a matter of fact, the capital of the Confederate States of America was Richmond, Virginia. So when we come down here and we answer the question prompt, I'm gonna go ahead and type some things that we want to remember. So the Eastern Territory was agricultural. We need to remember that. Dependent on slave labor for their economy. Western, Western territory, or, uh, sorry, territory. They did not have a, not very, they were not very agricultural. Not that there weren't some farms, but it wasn't the same scale. When I say agricultural, it means that these are huge farms that are there for big business to sell a lot of crop, to import a lot of crop. So small farms are always gonna exist everywhere. They're not very agricultural, more focused on industrial. Not dependent on slave labor for their economy. wanted oh, and they wanted to be part of the union they wanted to remain part of the union so here the western territory wanted to remain part of the union and up here the eastern territory wanted to secede from the union and remember secede means to leave These are the things that I want you to think about as you're writing, your, you're doing your writing. And when we describe how the geography of Virginia changed, remember this is how the land of Virginia changed after being divided over the issue of slavery. So look at your maps and look at how the state changed. There's a clear change in the state. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the slate. Uh, stop. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the slides. And each slide, I'm gonna kind of highlight, circle those areas. And you can pause those if you need to look at All right, so here I'm gonna call attention to how big it is. So I'm just gonna kind of circle, put a circle around the whole thing. This is very important. This is Virginia. Ooh. Sorry about that, I always forget it does that. Okay, so this is the whole of Virginia. 
All right, but then around the time of the Civil War, I want us to take a very close look at the change made here. And I will change that. Thank you for being so patient with me as I learn how to do this. I'm sorry guys, I'm not feeling very well today, so it's been a little bit hard to talk. All right, so right there, I want us to look at that free state versus that slave state. And I want you to think about what Virginia looks like today. So pause there if you need to look at it another second. And then you can pause here if you need to look at our notes about the things that we're going to talk about when we write our sentences. So I think you can use at least two sentences to describe how the land changed. So now let's go ahead and go look at day seven, May 5th. What led to the Civil War? Our learning opportunities for day seven are, we're gonna read the activity titled, What Led to the Civil War? We're gonna read that together. We're gonna to follow the directions to show what you have learned about the events that led to secession and war. We're gonna use the checklist to guide you in choosing a person from the Civil War era, the time period, and creating a poster that advertises your press conference. Optional is to perform this press conference for someone you know at home. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just create the poster and share it with your teacher. Okay, so what led to the Civil War? Let's talk about that. To show what you have learned about the events that led to secession, remember secession means to leave, and the Civil War, you will be advertising and holding your very own press conference. Choose to play the role of the important Civil War people on the following slides below. Then you're going to create a poster that will advertise your press conference or speech about what you believe in. To create your poster, you can use paper or these slides of any size. Use any materials you want. Once your poster is complete, you can hold a press conference for someone you know, if you want to. You don't have to. Use the information in the table below to guide your work. You're going to do your best, show off your acting skills, and you're going to have fun, hopefully. Um, I hope you do. This is a really fun activity if you want. On the following slides are the directions for what to do. So let's go look at the directions. So step one, we're going to choose one of the following key players from the Civil War era. We have some really great figures here. All right, we have Harriet Tubman, John Brown, Nat Turner, and Abraham Lincoln. And these were very important people in the Civil War era. Step two, you're gonna prepare a poster that advertises your press conference. Be sure to include the following on your poster. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the important things. Oh no, I don't think I can because it's a picture, sorry guys. All right, so have a display of your Civil War person's name and a relevant and creative nickname or title for that person. An example would be Harriet Tubman, great navigator of the Underground Railroad. They came up with the title Navigator of the Underground Railroad because she was key and instrumental to the Underground Railroad. Now the Underground Railroad was not a technical railroad that was underground. What the Underground Railroad was, was the escape path for slaves who were seeking their way to freedom. They had run away, and what the Underground Railroad was, it was a network of people who were willing to help and hide these slaves to get them up to the northern states, because once they were in the northern states, they were free. And they called her the Great Navigator because she did. She organized a lot of that. She helped put together a lot of the network. And you've, after she escaped, because she was a former slave herself, she made sure to continue to help others who were seeking freedom. So Harriet Tubman was amazing, and I really suggest that you read up a lot on her. All right, so you're going to write or draw a representation of the side of the war they were on. For example, were they on the Union side of the war, which is the North, were, uh, and they were the Free States? Or were they on the Confederate side of the war? This was the South. These were the Slave States. Include a list of at least three details about their side of the war. So some examples are going to include what the economy was like for that side of the war, the population for that side, and why they are free or slave states. We talked about why Virginia was a slave state, because they had become dependent upon slave labor for their economy. In the North, they were free states, 
because they were industrial, they were not dependent upon slave labor, and they believed you should not own a person. Explain how they were involved in the events leading to secession and war. What did this person do that made them famous? So Harriet Tubman, that example up there, we know she's famous because not only did she escape slavery, but she dedicated her life to helping other slaves escape and become free. Create a quote or something that you think that person would say about the war if they were alive today. So what is something they might say? What would they tell you about the Civil War? What would they teach you? Then your optional is to hold the press conference, which is a speech for someone you know. So you'll perform it by telling your audience about the information you include on your post poster. You're gonna share your creative quote, turn it into a famous one, and let your audience pretend to be reporters and answer any questions they might have about your person. So when you do that, like I said, you can insert a slide you if you're doing it digitally and make your poster you can also um get a great big piece of paper and draw it and take a picture of it if you want to share it with your teacher if you want to learn more about harriet tubman nat turner abraham lincoln or john brown um there are some websites uh, get a hold of your teacher and your teacher can send you towards Ducksters or History for Kids so you can look up more information on them. All right, I hope that um, going through these slides helped you out a little bit. If you need any additional help, make sure you get a hold of your teacher. Make sure to um, share anything you have in the comments below. And thank you fourth grade for joining me. I'll see you later. Bye!